2020 and time's going so fast. I'm gonna read off a list right now. Alright, everything's too complex. Pissing contest. More complex doesn't mean better. Polishing a video usually adds unnecessary cost. The video becomes bloated in its length and content and the message is weakened. Polished videos are a red flag. Good enough is good enough. If people were to make their own media, such as audio video or just videos or podcasts, whatever, or literature, just any kind of human created media, and true independent, not false indie, they get shamed for being simple. Triple A studio stuff is industry standard. Industry standard is unrealistic and prohibitive. Photos get photoshopped unnecessarily and Adobe Photoshop is a very good program, but it's really only good for the basics. You should only be using Sharpen or Unsharp Mask, the color and the graphics balance, like Levels tool. That's a very good tool. Crop, Resize, and Export Library. Photoshop has the best export library. Nothing even comes close. About Taxes especially in America, but I'm sure it's similar in other parts of the world. Taxes are overcomplicated, and there's weird letter coding on the forms that would imply that there are more forms, but that's not really the case. There's only a few forms, but instead of being called A, B, C, it's, it's like Z and W and just all that crap. There's not really that many tax forms, but the way that they are lettered would imply that there are. And tax form companies like H&R Block will lobby to keep taxes very complex so that they could stay, so that they can stay in business, H&R Block, by having people daunted at how complicated doing taxes are that the people will come and buy their services. They don't want people doing their own things and that's also pretty much universal. That's how it is in this world. Uh, the companies and the government which are they got their hands in each other's pockets. Governments and businesses are pretty much one and the same. They don't want people to do their own things. And there's a lot more thing that can be said, but I can't really get into that right now. Big Agricorp deliberately undercuts farmers and growers. However, farmers pull their own BS. They'll overcharge for milk, and when it's not sold, the farmers will dump all that milk into a hole. Meat, dairy, and eggs at the store are underpriced and undervalued, and it's basically a middle finger to the farmers, but the farmers aren't helping their own cases, so, you know, that's kind of its own disaster. The government pays farmers to not grow corn or raise pigs, and that's some kind of a weird reverse subsidy. Alright, so this is a little bit of a collaboration, and we welcome all input, you know, valuable input. We, we know what's valuable and what's not. So, small mistakes here and there are okay as long as the message is still there. They act as a kind of canary in a coal mine for shills and non-genuine people who ignore 99% of what you say but microfocus in on your one little error. Nobody should demand perfection of a speaker, and the principle of charity is underutilized, and principle of charity is basically assuming the best, and even if a person misphrases something, you should understand what they're getting at. Even if they've made an error or used the wrong word by accident, you should understand and perhaps rephrase and pitch in more ideas to help that person get the message across. Another word, I think, would be steel manning, you know, like the tin man. There's you know what a straw man is, and then there's a, the tin man, so anyway, steel manning is the opposite of straw manning. It's when you come up with the very best opposing argument for a controversy or something like that. If the speaker makes a minor mistake, but you understand what they intended to say, or you understand the basics of the argument, even with the minor error, you should always give the benefit of the doubt and ignore the minor mistake or just assume what it is they meant to say rather than the mistake they said. People who break this are assholes and they aren't even worth talking to. Flashy intros, pet names, share, like, subscribe, my Patreon friends, hours long rambling live videos are self-serving and hard to share. Condensed truth is best. Curb all ideas of doing big things. No documentaries are needed. Just get your voice out there now. Production values hypnotize and serve as a barrier to people making their own media. That is an extremely true statement. 
it's unnecessary gatekeeping that people fall for. People think, oh, I don't have a very good camera, I'm not qualified. Oh, I don't have a good microphone, I don't qualify. That is where editing comes in. You need to know how to edit. And I don't mean ad crap, I mean polish it, amplify it, trim the crap out, and make it good, and export. One big reason to make stuff simply is because ain't nobody got time for that. People need to know that, insert shell name here, have a team helping them. It's not realistic, and it's cringy and self-important and idol worship garbage. And another thing is talking about how much media fakery even goes into things, which that has actually been covered quite a lot, so... Oh, this one is about chefs, especially like chefs on YouTube. So... Someone watched a chef on YouTube, and in the comments, someone pointed out how the chef was just miming while cook was miming cooking while talking. And if you watch the camera angles and cinematic cuts closely, you can actually see that it never showed her actually cooking anything. Just her hand holding utensils, explaining what she was doing, but the bottom cut off. He notices this all the time, even now with people like Gordon Ramsay who's a very prominent TV chef, and I don't watch TV, so... They will show Ramsay talking about doing stuff, then new angle, then all you see is a pair of hands doing stuff, back to Gordon's face, and... Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we all know about that sort of a thing. If people knew that highly produced is synonymous with fake, they might lose respect for it. And also, on a side note, I think that ultra-high definition televisions are going to be the thing that wakes people up to green screen and CGI fakery. Because... You know how it is, these freaks, like, they're just demanding people buy bigger and better things, and there's planned obsolescence, and there's, like, this super high-def big numbers for TV or the new generation of video, and everyone's saying, you know, at that point, you can't tell the difference. Like, what is it, like, a thousand P, just some big stupid number of pixels. Like, you don't need to go higher than that. It's not necessary. Yeah, back on the topic of TV chefs... Not saying they never cook, but you never know. Gotta pay close attention. Sometimes it looks really dodgy, like they did just pretend to cook something while reading off a recipe. And their sous chef probably made the dish. And on another note, related to food on television, generally speaking, unless it's like a live video recording of people at a restaurant for real, you know, the, that food will be genuine. But if food is being shown on TV that is being made specifically for TV, it's not going to be seasoned. It's only going to superficially look that way. I think with Penn and Teller's BS, they did a cooking segment, and basically, instead of a proper chef, they had a special effects artist that, he was like using a blowtorch and getting drunk in the kitchen, like he was taking, he was drinking vodka in the kitchen or something, and he was just like making things out of non-food substances and burning it with a blowtorch. I think that Penn and Teller BS episode was about the power of suggestion and food and they were doing this hidden camera experiment where they were serving people a cool whip and like they had this idealistic 20 year old and a 40 year old who was a little more keen to this sort of thing and the waiter was coming up with all this bullshit about how the food was made and the young person was like wow that's so cool this food is so good and then the 40 year old is all like something isn't right here and then when the waiter reported back that everything was made up and it was all just garbage. The 40-year-old was all like, well, that would explain a lot. Oh, and uh, another thing related to this is you should know about the the food and advertisements. You could just look that up. The, the food for ads, like, it's literally synthetic materials, and if they show ice cream for a print ad, it's going to be some kind of a petroleum byproduct or something like that. And a lot of that stuff is literally paint, like, stuff that you would paint your house with. That's all for now, so I'll talk at you some other time. Basically, I kind of remembered a little gripe that I have, although it really doesn't matter at this point. But I think people have become overstimulated and have naturally developed overly high standards due to media exposure. And I always talk about unrealistic standards and unrealistic thinking of production. And this is going to sound very... I guess grouchy and sour grapes-ish, but, like, if a human being wanted to make a video game, it should be something that you could play on an NES, or a Super NES, or a PlayStation 1.
you know, as an example. I like the idea of video games. I'm not really into a lot of the execution of video games, but I like the idea. Just the concept of exploring a fictional world a person came up with, exploring scenarios. Uh, there's like this NES game made by a grouchy Japanese guy that didn't like video games, and the real purpose of the game is you go around and you punch people in the face, and I think that's really funny. Or video games that are all about their dialogue tree and stuff like that. Or just trying new things. I, I can't say I've played many video games, and I've also forgotten a lot about the stuff I used to be into, like that sort of thing, but... You know, I just think that all this refined, polished, AAA, highly produced stuff is giving people an unrealistic set of expectations, and when people obviously cannot meet those expectations, they feel bad, and they feel like they're useless, and, and that's really bad thinking. People shouldn't be feeling that way. You don't need to be an amazing artist, and I keep saying that those artists, a lot of them do cheat. A lot of them have very good skills, and, you know, you get that sort of a skill set from just hard work, dedication, blood, sweat, tears, etc., or writing. Uh, I think a lot of books are overbloated, and a big problem with Russian literature is you could just tell everyone was paid by the word, and it's just this long mess of junk. And H.P. Lovecraft, there's just write so many words, and if you distill it, just like, I saw a spooky monster and it was a blob of tentacles and eyeballs and then I went insane. You don't need to spend a whole fat book talking about that, okay? It's just so egotistical and I could think of cruder words to put it, but I shouldn't be so crude. I already say the S word a little too much, but, you know, that word is kind of warranted, isn't it? You know, people just need to keep it simple and minimalistic. I think minimalism, especially now that there's just no time anymore. Video games are nothing but buggy. They're, they're like good graphics, and then they're this buggy mess, and they're incomplete, and then new DLCs come out. Like, the games are really short, and then there's these new DLCs. So they don't have time to make them. Same with movies. They don't have time. You shouldn't even be bothering with that. I think feature-length film is, like, one of the biggest mistakes. I mean, cinema is descended from theater, and it used to be that people thought actors were lower than prostitutes, and people used to despise actors, but this has been largely forgotten by society, and actors are praised as these glorious figures of society when they are not. They're liars, and I mean, it's fine if you want to make an artsy film, but keep it short, you know? You don't need you know, just have creativity, get creative, suspension of disbelief for... It's not necessary to have AAA production, and you don't have to go, like, an hour. You, you shouldn't even be more than ten minutes, in my opinion. Like, I'm not bashing on the arts, I just think they're blown way out of proportion, and I don't like who's controlling it. If a human were making stuff, I'm sure it'd be great, but that's not really the way things are. Humans are not allowed to get published, and a lot of so-called indie media is not indie. It's just funded... It's called indie, but it's secretly funded. And, you know, I've already talked about that. And none of this truly matters, but, well, this is all going to end soon, and this stuff doesn't matter. There's always a really good way to reach people, and it's through minimalism. No one's going to read a wall of text. Just distill a wall of text into no more than two sentences, maybe three. And, well, it's up to the people that look at it to look up those words that you use and... You know, just keep it simple, easy to understand. Explain it so that a a five-year-old could understand it. Yeah, that, that's also another thing. Freaks, they really like to jerk off their own egos and pretend that they're smart when they're nothing but overgrown children, literally. And they like to act as though they're really smart, but if you just come out and just start info-dumping stuff that a five-year-old could understand, then all of a sudden they get really scared. Try it, it's fun. Well, I will once again talk at you some other time, and God bless everyone.